of us, uh, including me, uh, could lead through experience. Another bucket is influencing, relationship building or strategic thinking. What does it mean by that? Uh, so if we, if we realize that each of us or every leader is having different type of uh, leadership. It's different type which Mother Teresa is having, it's different type which, for instance, Einstein is having, or for instance, Martin Luther King is having. Uh, knowing this type of leadership give us completely different perspective what is important for those type of people, type of leadership, then we can use a proper language communicating with them. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cornelia Zegel, I'm the leader of Global Women Club in Frankfurt. For those who are new here, this channel is mostly about the leadership and personal growth. If you want to reach out to the next level, please stay tuned because I highly believe those videos and interviews will inspire you to transform and grow. All right. Hello, everyone. Today, I have invited Cornelia Zekiel to talk about effective communication in research teams. Welcome, Cornelia. So you are the first one to start up our second season, and we are very excited to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Bianca. I'm very happy and very, first of all, delighted to be invited and share my uh, practices with you, what my experience, so you can you can thrive and really master communication uh, piece in your area. Yeah, this thank you. This is amazing. Can you tell us where are you joining for? Because from because people here in the audience are from Europe, from the US. So where are you right now? Okay, actually, I'm in Europe. I'm based in Germany, but currently I'm I'm uh, visiting my family in Poland. So it's afternoon. Uh, it's three p.m. Um, Berlin time. Uh, yeah, so uh, good Amazing. morning and good afternoon. <laughs> Amazing. So I decided to invite Cornelia because I was aware that she has a lot of experience with teamwork. Uh, she is an expert in managing teams from different cultures in the corporate world and an expert in communication and using communication as a very important tool, right, in uh, creating successful teams. And can you tell us a little bit, like a couple of words about yourself, Cornelia, so also the audience feels, uh, knows a bit more about you? Okay, absolutely. So in a quick, uh, short introduction, actually, I'm a leader, a business leader. I start my career uh, in finance. I study economy and finance uh, in Breslau in Poland. And I start my career working for a big corporate like HP, um, Abbott, medical devices company. And uh, yeah, so my primary uh, field was the finance and, you know, <laughs> left brain part. But at the same time, I develop uh, ladies the skills um, mm -hmm. related to the communication, which I would like to share with you, working across different uh, teams, um, uh, cultures, and also uh, different projects. So I can give you a little bit, yes, yes uh, piece of information. I love this because the truth is we are all the time communicating, right? Even if we are not really talking, like speaking verbally, we are speaking with our body language, with our energy, with our state of emotions, right? We are all the time communicating with people around us. And sometimes we are not even aware how important the communication is and what kind of impression we're actually giving to people around us, right? Especially if we are in a teamwork, right? Where people are supposed to be so coordinated with each other that we are always affecting each other, right? And my first question for you is, can you please tell us a little bit, what are the results of having an effective communication in teamwork, right? Versus just having like a all scattered kind of communication. What are the benefits? Like, like kind of a comparison of the results you'd have if you have an effective, like well-directed communication. Of course, Bianca. So you are absolutely right. We are communicating all the time. We are just human being, and uh, we cannot just exist in a business world, in a relationship world, without communicating. But our talk is more toward uh, kind of business part slash science part because this is what I can give you more expertise and um, yes. um, experience and example. So uh, the, the key area is communication is not about to be right. You know what I mean? Sometimes we. Mm. <laughs> 
we might we well if we are like a leaders or a project leaders or part of the project it's all mm. about to be effective what does it mean the effective in the business well effective means projects are progressing projects are completed mm. and it is you know one why for instance why projects are failing basically i can tell you one of the number three reasons why projects are failing because of the let's say poor communication or lack of the skills of, of, of the communication, isn't it? Because I experienced that one as well. And majority, if you think about it, a part of the resources, found structure, communication is really one of the three areas why our uh, project fail. Why is happening mm -hmm. that? Well, there are multiple reasons. And one of them, which I would like to share with you and look for the communication point of view from a different kind of angle, you know, mm -hmm. because communication is really bright subject. But uh, for our talk, I would like to look uh, on a communication fr from two different angles. The one, as, especially from the leadership perspective, you as a part of the team and you as a part of the uh, person who is supporting or reporting to your leader. So if we start looking on a communication from the leadership perspective, and especially what type of leadership we need to deal, for instance, in our project, it mm -hmm. might make our life a little bit easier, Bianca. So this is how I would like to... So you are saying it's important to know who, are, who is the like, leader project, right? And we know we are dealing with, right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh -huh. more, spe uh -huh. more specifically, uh, I would like to also uh, kind of emphasize a little bit more about a different type of um, leadership. Each of us, because I know I'm talking to the women in science um, who are mainly like a left brain uh, part, which are more, more structured, more goal oriented driven. But each of us, uh, Every leader is having type of style, individual style, which is de defined by our strengths, natural strengths, which we have. So knowing that uh, elements, we can identify how uh, that one it, it's working. So what I mean by that, if because each of us, uh, including me, uh, could lead through experience. Another bucket is influencing relationship building or strategic thinking. What does it mean by that? Uh, so if we if we realize that each of us or every leader is having different type of uh, leadership, it's different type which Mother Teresa is having, it's different type which, for instance, Einstein is having, or for instance, Martin Luther King is having. Uh, knowing this type of leadership give us completely different perspective what is important for those type of people, type of leadership, then we can use a proper language communicating with them. And don't get me wrong, there is no one common strategy which you can kind of copy paste and say, okay, if I start using it, I will be successful because different people, they're having different style, different strengths of uh, uh, leading. Uh, that's why knowing that we can avoid kind of uh, friction. Um, let me give you example, what, what I mean, mean by, by that. Some leaders, they might be having very strong skills, natural strengths, like a futuristic. They know what's going on from the, like a very visionary thing. But each of the strengths of the leader, and you need to keep in, maybe that would be revolutionary what I'm going to tell you, is uh, having strengths at the same time and also blind spots. So mm -hmm. if that leader, for instance, um, is very futuristic, knowing what's going on really ahead of time, most likely uh, the blind spot for this type of person might be, he might be having kind of difficulties um, to, uh, to pull people over because he's far ahead with that vision. Mm -hmm. And majority of people, Bianca, you know what I mean? Majority of people, they cannot follow so quickly. That's why if we start be aware of all of this kind of blind spots, which every type um, of leadership or the strengths which we might have, give us extremely powerful way on our end, which we can influence. So imagine, this I'm is the very leader. important. I yeah. like this because, like, awareness, like, it's very important to be aware. Like, these people are not perfect, right? And yes. Yes, absolutely. And this is how we are structured, you know. We are the package of strengths and the weaknesses. So 
we, of course, we want to focus on our weaknesses, but at the same time, our strengths is having also kind of um, um, blind spots. Like I was just mentioning, imagine mm -hmm. you are very good in terms of focusing. You know, you can, you can very focus, you can be very dedicated, nothing is distracting you, which means you are accomplishing your stuff easily. But what does it mean for, for you, for instance, from the project um, ones, you might be missing a uh, kind of stuff which are popping up through your inbox. It's very common <laughs> in my case, um, where you need to, knowing that, you need to kind of push yourself to distract yourself, to keep eye what's going on in terms of other information which start coming on, you know? Yeah. So if we start looking for the communication, kind of responsibility for both ends, Mm -hmm. How this is very important. I like this word responsibility on both ends, right? So this also put, puts a balance. And um, also when, if we actually approach the communication in the very beginning with this mindset, I think this also helps to keep the energy flow between the, the person like balance, right? Yes. Because yes. at some point it's also our emotions that will affect the... Yeah, absolutely. The and... Yeah, and another yeah. element um, which we should keep in mind, it's also active listening. Like, like you just pointed out, it's, I would even describe it like a balance, like a dance, you know, first mm. of all, you need to see how you can operate, you know? And of course, because you need to create kind of relationship, you know, going forward. If you are having your team, start building your team. It's all about also uh, setting up the rules how we are operating, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> this is also very important. First Especially of all, we... in a teamwork, right? We're talking yes. about the communication of teamwork i really like this and sorry to interrupt you but this sure. is a very important point because especially in science since we are all the time supposed to be creative right and sometimes people tend to forget that also some kind of structure is important right because when yes. you are in this creative mode this is very like you know one idea comes one idea goes it's kind of structure is almost invisible and it's supposed to be, right? Because it's very difficult to create if you are all framed. But <sighs> as you are saying, it's important to also keep in mind kind of in the background, this kind of, uh, to, as a regulator for the teamwork, right? To have this kind of yes. structure. And since you brought this up, is this structure, should only the leader of the group be responsible of, of that or also the team members somehow uh, yes. contribute to this? I don't know in what way yes. or... Okay. Normally, uh, it should come from the top. Basically, well, but it should be collective approach. Imagine you are part of the team, uh, you're having a leader, and your leader is not having a structure. So what you could do is be proactive, knowing that you can say, hey, guys, um, what about to put in place our weekly or bi-weekly meetings? For instance, something like a catch-up point mm -hmm. for you to keep track on that. Even going further, because right now we start going to the operational mode, because what we start our discussion, it was more frame and the mindset concept, like we just discussed awareness. Now we are moving more towards operational part. W what are the tools basically, which might help us to navigate the better communication and, and the track uh, based on our action. So one of them could be uh, weekly uh, or meetings, which you can mm -hmm. have with your leader, with your coworkers, project leader, whoever might be participating in that. Having a weekly uh, calls will keep you on track, measure the temperature and quickly identify the roadblocks during the way, you know, because sometimes something might pop up and you can quickly grab that and uh, assign responsible people to carry over and fix that uh, mm -hmm. uh, issues or, or obstacles yeah mm. uh, another another way which is very powerful what i'm i'm very uh, uh big advocate for that is short um, um uh, quick meetings and like i said normally leader should be the one defining the rules what is the way of communicating for instance i'm available on a mm -hmm. on a, i don't know if you're having a chat like i don't know teams chat or google chat mm -hmm. this is something which leader could say hey wherever you you want to reach me i can be available 
You can also be more precise setting up times or you prefer emails or you prefer uh, chat or whatever it's convenient for you. If the leader, for instance, uh, is not in a proactive mode putting in structure. Exactly. You... This is the case. And this is usually the case in science because leaders in our case are the professors, right? Those are the group leaders for us. Mm -hmm. And usually professors are super busy because they have to be to carry so many other responsibilities. They not only do research, but they also teach. They also have administrative work. And on the other side, they have to also uh, lead these small research groups, which are mainly made up of students. Like, do you have mm -hmm. any particular advice in this case? If, because you cannot really force like the professor in this case, right? To, how can the students, right? Because students are in a more vulnerable place in yes. this case. How can they actually take the initiative or some, most of the time they feel like very, um, you know, they feel shy to actually approach the professor and, you know, suggest yes. some of this kind of structure. It's a bit different for us in the corporate world. And do you have any advice? How can the students in this case, like the team members, um, suggest or initiate in a way that feels comfortable to them but is also effective and it actually brings some positive result right okay of course uh, there is also a way how you phrase it so uh, i would like to also introduce you one concept which uh, i call this well incorporate we call this above the line whenever mm -hmm. you start you can phrase it uh you request in such a way in such a way saying hey i'm having i am not hey or like you can say Mr. Professor, I'm having an idea. What if we start implementing, like, I don't know, weekly meetings? I believe that will be very helpful for us because, first of mm. all, it's always to give the benefits for that person. So whenever you will be, it's, now we are touching once again, kind of selling the idea, you know, whatever the idea you might have. Mm -hmm. If it's like, in this case, improving the communication, putting in place the structure, meetings or folders or, or virtual place where we can start collecting the, the inputs, you can always say, I believe it will improve our um, uh, performance because it will keep people engaged. And then you can brainstorm mm -hmm. it. What will be the arguments which you can sell? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to share with you kind of concept where it's all very powerful. Uh, if you start, let's say, communicating project slash uh, 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 teamwork. I like this. Above the line. Great Do you know it? No? No, I don't know it, but I like it. Just having okay. a look at this. Okay. Okay. Look, ladies, everything which is above the line, which is super powerful. Whenever you are taking the action, no one is going to uh, to harm you. And normally, we are talking about normal positive behavior. We are not talking about bullying and stuff like this. Yeah, positive behavior. So, if I'm the leader and my um, team members coming to me and showing uh, initiatives like improving the situation, seeking solution, uh, mm. solving the problem, so you can use those uh, words or verbs, which are very powerful. And like I said, thinking from, from the arguments um, of um, improving the situation, what are the benefits, whatever you'll be selling and be proactive to offer your uh, leader, your, your, your professor, this mm -hmm. kind of idea uh, will be powerful. Of course, you need to think about it. Once you bring the idea, you will be the one who will be carry over or be like um, maintaining that whatever if you sure. want to uh, establish like a weekly course or notes or powerpoint or what you want to share or your ideas and concepts you can find that people who can help you to track on that not like professor is going to do that you know if 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 that person that leader is uh, receptive he will take the lead on that sometimes he might say or she might say you know what cornelia or Bianca, it's a great idea, lead that. And ladies, once again, through that behavior, through that communication, you are showing different type of skills that you are mm. creative, you are taking the action and you are putting yourself also in a leadership position. Because it's like I said, very important. yeah, yeah. And I hope and everyone you know what? here like really pays attention to what Cornelia is saying right now, right? So this is a very important point. Mm -hmm. Yes, and ladies, there is another thing which I would like to show you. 
below the line. If I see in my groups or with other groups, which I'm dealing in, in corporate, you know, mm. always like, oh, it's like, a, you know, um, um, complaints. I didn't get that feedback. I just said it, you know, that behavior is clearly giving you the indication, like a red flag, something is alerting, should be alerting for you. It's like a, like an allergy. For me, it's really kind of allergy, which means I start seeing that these people or teams or behaviors, they are kind of red flags for me. And then quickly I can change the behavior of, I mean, start be, like I said, changing the strategy because I measure kind of uh, like a, if I see complaints, then my immediate response would be, why, why instead of encouraging those people, be in an active, uh, proactive uh, seat instead of complaining? Because complaints mm. doesn't drive you anywhere. So whenever you complaint see- Complaining is not good. I, I've told my audience before, and I usually say that, that complaint, like negative energy, just brings more negative energy in general. Like, yes. Just, yeah. Yes. And you you know for instance if you're having a, 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 a team teams and you see you are the one who is um, who is uh, more proactive really partner with those people and create like a driving uh, force for the changes you know mm. because the more you will uh, be integrated or uh, with the people who are communicating above the line see possibilities looking mm. for solutions taking the responsibility so like i said uh if you came up with that kind of uh proactiveness it show you uh first of all that you are taking a lead you are responsible you are caring you are showing the leadership uh, uh uh movements as well and you are the one who is trying to find a better ways of improvements and whenever you want to yes yeah so important mm -hmm. Yeah, and very important ones uh, in terms of uh, effective communication is basically, uh, let me stop sharing that. Sorry, I can I share later on with like, I just I just want yeah. to emphasize because everything that you are saying is so important and usually in research, especially students, we don't really hear these things, right? No one really tells us when we are students such, such kind of things, we kind of jump into the world of the research and we are supposed to collaborate and be productive and work on very often very challenging topics and kind of, you know, just trying to figure things out on the way. And I really hope that everyone who is here and people who are later going to listen to the reply really get from Mon Cornelia is saying that even though you are a team member, you are a student and it seems like there is such a huge hierarchy between you and your professors, you are an active player, right, in the in the whole scene of uh, of the team, of the research team, and I really want all of you to start kind of uh, feeling that conf that inner confidence and using that uh, that that power that you are actually also an active player, even though you are just a student. Let's say. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. And you know what, ladies, this is how it starts. So whenever I was growing in my uh, corporate career, I just felt like a junior, you know, now I'm leading the team and it's coming gradually. And the ones who are showing proactiveness, you know, there's always a um, mm. very elegant way. I'm, I'm, we are not talking here, be aggressive, be, you know, forcing your ideas. No, if you do it in a very elegant way, like I said, seeing the um, positive, what team might benefit, what even the professor, because the, the, the well better oil machine than the better uh, uh, visibility for the professor as well. So it's not only, <laughs> sorry for my dog, dog. dog is, yeah. So it's not only professor who is um, benefiting, but the overall team is benefiting. Hmm. It's all about how you will package uh, the whole initiative which you will be raising your hand and like i said if you will be doing without harming without uh saying in an arrogant way nothing but i can guarantee you nothing bad is going to happen to you you will only gain the uh, positive and better credits like i just said it will come like a natural leadership through you you know i love this Fernandia. and there's something else i like i had in the back of my mind was how about uh, very often I've seen people that there are lots of misconceptions and miscommunications, misunderstanding, misunderstanding because people just make assumptions, you know, 
uh, they see one of the team members or their leader just do something and they make a whole make up a whole story in their mind about that and then they, their behaviors correspond to that story that they made up in their mind that I've seen sometimes they just deteriorate right the um, the communication in the team and the results and everything so things start going down the hill if everyone does this thing so how can and I know we as human beings, for certain reasons, tend to do that. So how can we become aware and really stop this, not, not to allow this to create any, any damage in the um, yes. in a collaboration? Um, it, you're absolutely right, Bianca. This is, this is the thing, this is the human being nature, let's put it that way, because we are caught in our brain based on our um, experience, based on our talk. Uh, and my um, solution, my tip to you would be think above, not what is good what is good for you, but what is good for the overall project for a good sense for that project, you know? Mm -hmm. Because whenever you will be not uh, harming anybody uh, in, the, in the discussion or in a project, nothing will be uh, angry. So for instance, if there is a conflict, uh, it's, it's very common, whenever there's a conflict or dispute, be uh, objective, you know, don't uh, focus um, on, on specific person, just mention, uh, for instance, you can say, hey, I realize we have an issue and I would like to talk about that common situation which happened. And of course, we know behind the process, behind the studies, whatever, there are the people, you know, who are making a mistake. So mm. acknowledging that, start talking about something above, not really uh, linking that one with the specific uh, uh, people, just be objective, you know, uh, whatever is going to happen. So that one give you powerful tool because no one will really uh, be harmed. And this is, this is what is going to happen. People, they used to feel offended if it's the wrong language used uh, for, the, for the discussion. Mm -hmm. Like another thing that I really would love to know about Cornelia is the emotional intelligence when it comes to communication, right? Because also our state of emotions uh, really affect what we are saying. It, it affects how we are presenting ourselves if we are not aware, right? If we really allow those emotions to take over. Um, what's your advice? What's your take on this? Like how can we navigate yes. in this water? Yes. So, Bianca, emotional intelligence and the ladies, emotional intelligence, it's not looking what is important for, for me, but really, first of all, understanding how I'm operating and uh, seeing from the helicopter view uh, how others are operating as well. Mm -hmm. So that one might, might give you very powerful tool, like I just mentioned, of course, which required looking not only for like my box, my area, but rather um, on a broad uh, scope of that and see um, that cooperation, like I said, it's, it's a regime um, between those two sides. So first of all, knowing the language which we are using, because look, it's, it's, it's obvious if I'm using the English or whatever language I'm communicating, doesn't mean I will mm -hmm. be understood. Mm -hmm. So knowing that concept as well, that's why it's emotional intelligence. So we need to be intelligent means we can use all the elements which we learn mm -hmm. and we can find units and use it in a proper strategy manner. You know what I mean? Like I said, there is no one single formula which you can copy paste and say, whenever you will be talking like this, you will be successful. Yes, mm -hmm. but the, the thing is, if <laughs> you will deal with the same type of people, mm -hmm. you know? I love this. This is very important. Yeah, this is actually, I mean, having the awareness of the moment, right? Of course, the, like the strategies are more like guiding, but of course, like we need to have the, the on moment, moment by moment awareness so that we respond respectively. I love this. Um, I love everything you have shared, Cornelia. Like, is there any other particular advice you really like want to tell my audience something that you feel like they should really know and when it comes to communication in a team and something that they should really walk away with uh, after all this very valuable advice that you shared with us. Okay, I would uh, 
say be really in a proactive have a voice whenever it's coming to uh meeting project be proactive but in a very um uh, mature way mm. there's another yeah and another thing which i would like to also uh so can um, you elaborate a little bit on this mature way i like this one like how okay like you know okay. two three examples so it's like very shortly i want to be okay. mindful of your time so Okay, first of all, uh, what is also very important, you know, sometimes it's happening if you're talking about the professors, it depends, like, check your ego, I mean, check your ego, which will be also kind of parameter for you, which you will see the responses for your, uh, uh, for your reaction with people, what I mean by that, and ladies, don't get me wrong, ego is a good thing, but we need to distinguish that we're having a kind of low ego, uh, and also higher ego, the low ego, is more towards putting us in this greediness, um, jealousy, this kind of stuff. The higher ego, part of the higher ego, when we want to do something from the highest good, you know, for and there is also the positive way of competition, of growth on a, on a positive manner, you know. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by uh, um, Bianca, this, this uh, mature way and also checking um, the ego, whenever you are selling your ideas, um, uh, how, are you okay if someone is giving you uh, better ideas, who ideas is better than you? How you are responsive into that? Are you okay or you might mm -hmm. say, no, 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 I, I force my idea because I always need to be right, you know? How receptive you are for other people who are collaborative in your in your project, you know? Even like a professor, you know? What is your response to that? How you respond, yeah? Uh, start using also follow-up question especially powerful tool which is feedback um feedback might give you also a good kind of checkpoint and barometer where you are standing yeah so whenever you finish your project or like a milestone check out with 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 the person uh, with your professor and say uh, mr professor i would like to have a discussion and feedback from you how how does it work and that that one will give you also kind of understand and you are going to understand if it's right or wrong mm -hmm. so uh, for instance if he will give you the response of the situation would happen you might say no 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 he got me completely in a different way when i meant to uh, react into that so you can also uh identify that yeah um and another thing which is very important one maturity, which talking about maturity is definitely one of my favorite topics because it applies everywhere why i like it so yes much. yes and yeah like i said you know uh those type of questions those type of reactions might give you also kind of checkpoint for yourself because uh if we start knowing us what type of leadership i prefer you know if i'm more uh like a kind of dictator thing, you know what I mean? When this needs to be done, then it's fine. You need to just operate and understand what are the rules. And especially if you are working with the team, setting up the rules. What are the way of re re um, responses? How you prefer to be communicated? You prefer to be checked on a regular basis, yeah? And um, first of all, also foster trust, not competition, because I think it's not a secret and majority of the cases people forgetting that then all whenever I'm, I'm having a, um, people coming to me or um, my mentees I'm always asking do you trust that person are you a trustful person as well you know what I mean because then if the fundament of the end relationship business one private one is set based on the trust is another discussion we can talk about the trust in, a, in another round but then you can gradually start going to the next level you know because mm -hmm. uh, that will be my quick responses bianca if we're talking about the uh, mature way of communicating towards uh, team and towards I leadership love this. this is so helpful and i also wanted to add to everything that you said that to everyone here just be mindful of what kind of research group you are entering in from the very beginning right especially to those of you who are going to apply for phds or postdocs right so the phd is at least three years right so you're kind of stuck for three years with that research team and be 
like when you apply to a group try to understand also like what's their culture at work like what's their uh, you know what kind of people they are what kind of as Cornelia was saying what kind of leadership style they have right and try to assess if you are actually a match with those people with that team also from this perspective right not only from the science perspective because from my personal experience I can tell you that this is so important it's so important because research is never done alone never especially when you are a student already where you also you need a lot of help and a lot of collaboration like healthy collaboration from people around you from your professors and I think what Cornelia just said is very valuable and uh, I hope you apply it yes and Bianca if yeah. I may add one more thing which is also Elena related saying, to this is very helpful I'm really glad <laughs> yes thank you Elena Milena um Another element, ladies, is the same like Bianca mentioned, and I'm always repeating um, to, to the young leaders, uh, uh, you cannot change the attitude of the person, you know, you can, yeah, well. Yeah. You <laughs> can't enter the group with the idea, I'm going to change a person, right? Yeah. Yes, okay. exactly. Okay. You can hire a monkey and you can teach the monkey, but you cannot change. Monkey is just a monkey, <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, maybe it's a brutal way of co co comparison, but this is how it is. When I was recruiting uh, um, people or inviting people to my team, a part of the skills which, which they have for me uh, was very important, the values which they, yeah. they, uh, which they have. You know, what we mean by values? Okay, what motivates you? What is your reason of doing uh, the things? How you solve the conflicts? You know, you can, you can ask basically, like Benka mentioned, research. And it's another subject, how to do that research, what is important for you. And then knowing what is important for you, you will understand what kind of group of collaboration group you want to stick because it's a long-term journey, unless you want to like quick come and go, which is which is, which is is not the goal for you. Uh, I we would don't assume. recommend that. So, yeah. 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 All right. Thank you very much, Cornelia. Everything you have shared has been so valuable, so helpful. I personally have learned a lot from what you just shared and I hope everyone here as well so um, as I said so I don't want to take more of your time I want to be mindful and um, if any one of you has some feedback or something you want to share with us if you really learn something valuable of, or if you want to like have some urge to ask Cornelia something specific that you feel like you're struggling with use this Last minutes because we are kind of coming to an end. But before I want to Cornelia to tell us a little bit where we can find you, Cornelia, and the social media maybe, and um, if people want to know more about what you teach about communication, right? Because in 40 minutes we can't talk about everything. Uh, yes. Where can they find you? Maybe you can also share in the chat some links from. Oh, I need to go. Okay, links, I don't have it, but uh, you can quickly find me. Whenever you go to uh, LinkedIn, type my name, you can reach me there. You can find me in YouTube, just type in Kunlia Tsege, you can find my channel where I'm having a few talks and interviews for mm -hmm. the subject related to leadership. We can share the ebook, Bianca, later on with your group. Um, of course, uh, so do you I'm... have the ebook handy here? So you, we can put it in the chat and we can have a look. I think the ebook is very helpful. I personally had a look at that. So I definitely uh, recommend it. The ebook is very kind of very powerful tool, I would say, uh, for you to navigate and see uh, how you can implement some stuff, which you don't still don't have it. Like I said, YouTube, LinkedIn. You can also find me in um, uh, Global Woman. So whenever you type Global Woman Frankfurt, you can find me there because I'm also leading the monthly meeting with uh, women entrepreneurs, corporate as well. So you are also welcome there. Yeah, so that would be basically three uh, main places where you can find me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cornelia, for this amazing interview. Bye, everyone, and I wish you all the best. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. If you enjoyed the contents of this video, Click the subscribe button so you can receive more content like this every week. If you want to keep developing yourself, check my recommended videos 